Good news! There's not going to be a nuclear war because Putin will never use nuclear weapons. How do I know? Because Joe Biden told me so. Do you feel reassured? Do ya? Do you feel reassured? <laughs> Hello there, you awakening wonders. Thanks for joining us on our mutual voyage to truth and freedom that we must undertake together, that we may surely awaken and confront the terrible truths that are around us. Terrible truths that Joe Biden seems to be holding back from explaining, like if you keep provoking Vladimir Putin, you can't be sure that at some point he might not send a nuclear missile to, I don't know, the United Kingdom, Germany, anyway. Who knows what Vladimir Putin might do? He certainly showed NATO that if you provoke him crossing line after line, he will engage in war like the one in Ukraine, that we were told would be short and simple. And at the beginning, do you remember Joe Biden said, oh, uh, we would never put troops on the ground because that would mean World War III. Do you remember that? Do you remember that bit? Or did you switch off because there were so many crises going on, so much lies, so much misinformation being censored, some of which is accurate information, truthful information, that you actually, almost by accident, became an obedient little prisoner of the state rather than recognising that it is your opponent and that you have to participate in revolution right now. We stream every day on Rumble where we can speak even more freely. Join us there if you're not there already. Now, let's get into this story. What do you think's a greater risk to your life and the life of your loved ones? Is it nuclear war? And let me remind you, there's a war between Ukraine and Russia that's perhaps a proxy war between the United States and Russia. There are escalating tensions between China and the United States of America. Both of those combatants, all combatants in that, have access to nuclear weapons. And if that weren't enough, tensions in the Middle East continue to escalate and now are likely to involve Iran as well as Israel, and they all have nuclear weapons. But also, though, are you more worried about climate change? Because some people are, because I'll tell you why, because climate change means you can be put in a 15-minute city and only allowed a certain number of flights per year, and you can only buy this number of items of clothing. They're looking at ways to control you and pretending they're trying to help you. Is that basically what's going on? Let me know in the chat. Let's have a look at Joe Biden, reassuring all of us, as he's done so many times, that there's not going to be a nuclear war because Putin won't use nuclear weapons based on what? Insight? Is this the same sort of integrity and insight you used to get your son that job at Burisma? I hope so. We've seen more disarray with Russian generals, most recently with the firing of a general who criticized the defense ministry. Does this raise any new concerns about Putin potentially doing more drastic things uh, regarding Ukraine, like nuclear weapons, or potentially against the US, like election interference? <laughs> like those are two of the same thing. Oh no, they're sending over a uranium tipped Bit of election interference. <laughs> well, first of all, they're already interfered in American elections. So uh, that would not be anything new. Well, that's not true. It's been disproved. Still, dossier been disproved. Uh, they did that last time they tried to. No, no. Just lies. Do you know what I think is behind that? It's like, why wouldn't people vote for us? We're so great. We're so kind. We're so nice. It's a sort of mad hubris that the only reason people would consider voting for anyone else. Tell me, did you vote for Joe Biden? If not, why not? What is it? Are you a racist? Are you mad? Did a Russian interfere with you? I was just about to vote for Joe Biden. And then all of a sudden, along came Dostoevsky and <laughs> put me hand over here. I, I don't think there's any real prospect. You never know, but... Of, of Putin using nuclear weapons. Not only has the West, but China and the rest of the world have said, that's, don't go there. Don't go there. Oh, don't go there. Don't go there. Well, that's, that's the end of that then. Let's get on with provoking China and seeing if we can get this conflagration in the Middle East stoked up to fever pitch. Anyway, who's got time to worry about nuclear wars? Is the climate changed a bit? Is it different than it used to be? Now, listen, I'm not a climate change denier. I love the planet. I love each nation. I love every single one of you awakened wonders. What I will say is, how is this crisis being utilised? What are they going to suggest? Once they've established climate change, what's it going to be now? And that's why all of these massive organizations and these powerful institutions are going to be heavily regulated or is it going to be you stay indoors does the president stand by that comment absolutely he does climate change is an existential threat it could you know it actually threatens and is capable of wiping out all human life on earth uh, over time he, he said it was more frightening than a nuclear war is that it's more frightening than a nuclear war in this moment the president believes wholeheartedly that climate change is an existential threat to the all of human life on the planet. Well, he seems to have changed his opinion from last year because that's when he said this. At a private Manhattan fundraiser one year ago this month, President Joe Biden shared an assessment that he had not told the public 
From his vantage point, Biden told the room of Democratic Party donors the world faces the prospect of Armageddon for the first time since Kennedy in the Cuban Missile Crisis. But to be fair, Joe Biden could have forgotten that he said that. At the time, Biden was referring to the conflict in Ukraine. Oh, the heady days when there was only one potential <laughs> nuclear war threat. Do you remember that? You know, when we were kids, there was just one possibility of nuclear war. Now, Daddy, everywhere we look, there could be a nuclear war. That's right, son. It's called progress. Thank you, Joe Biden. Thank you. Which had just intensified with the bombing of the Nord Stream pipelines. Ah, oh, the Nord Stream pipelines. Remember those guys? Remember that bit of propaganda? Who could possibly have bombed those pipelines? Do you remember what the answer was? Putin. Putin. But doesn't he need those pipelines for his whole business model? That guy's crazy. And I'll tell you this, he will, hold on a minute, won't now use nuclear weapons. Phew, dodge the bullet there. Hopefully we can dodge these missiles. And Russia's declared annexations of four Ukrainian regions. Despite noting the dangers of a proxy war against Russia, the world's other top nuclear power, Biden has nonetheless pursued the higher priority of enforcing US hegemony by attempting to weaken it. Accordingly, Biden has continued the proxy war with a signature policy of flooding Ukraine with weapons, encouraging a failed counteroffensive, and blocking diplomatic off-ramps. When you hear it described like that, it doesn't seem like a very good idea, does it? Like, especially the bit where the off-ramps are being blocked. That would seem to be our best opportunity of evading and avoiding Armageddon. The deterioration the creation of nuclear arms treaties, especially within the context of the war in Ukraine, presents worrying trends not seen in generations as Washington and Moscow are one step away from direct conflict. The doomsday clock now stands at 90 seconds to midnight, the closest to global catastrophe it's ever been, according to the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists. It's a shame we've even got a doomsday clock. Could we set it back for summertime? Don't move that thing forward! We've only got 90 seconds! But the farmers! The Russian Duma has advanced plans to withdraw ratification of the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, citing the need to restore parity with the US, which has yet to ratify the decades-old treaty. Is it me? Or does the future feel more insecure and uncertain? Wars, pandemics, lies, trickery. My cats keep having kittens. The last one's personal. For those who are in the United States, there is a way to secure your hard-earned nest egg. American Hartford Gold make it easy to protect your savings and retirement accounts with physical gold and silver. With one phone call, they can have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or inside a qualifying retirement account like your IRA or 401k. American Hartford Gold is the highest rated firm in the US with an A plus rating from the BBB and thousands of satisfied clients. Right now, they will give you up to $5,000 of free silver on your first qualifying order. This offer is only for US customers. Call 866-505-8315. That's 866-505-8315. 505-8315 or simply text BRAND to 998899. Get up to $5,000 of silver and protect your future in this crazy, crazy world with some solid precious metals literally made in stars. While the decision to withdraw ratification will not be as damaging as America's unilateral withdrawal from the anti-ballistic missile treaty and the intermediate range nuclear forces treaty in 2002 and 2019 respectively, it serves as another reminder that attention must be directed towards addressing an increased nuclear threat, especially as war rages in Ukraine. The US must lead by example, like ratifying the CTBT when it comes to international treaties it expects other countries to abide by. I'd like you to abide by this treaty. Will you be abiding by this treaty? That's your treaty. Keep that treaty away from me. And why don't you sign that treaty, you warmonger? Unsurprisingly, following Russian President Vladimir Putin's comments on the subject earlier this month at the Valdai International Discussion Club. Discussion Club? A bit relaxed. Ah, oh, welcome, sit down. Let's have a discussion. Would you like to die in a nuclear war? Hmm, no, I'd prefer to live peacefully in a kind of democracy. <clears throat> Vetoed! The legislative process for de-ratification began at pace. That's what they're doing at the old discussion club. And now, let's not ratify any peace treaties. I love this discussion club. More wine? Yes, please. Tastes a bit radioactive. Mm, small price to pay. Down the hatch? Oh, hmm. Actually, we should get down the hatch because... Oh yes, bloody hell, another mushroom cloud. Officials have clarified that at present, Moscow does not see a need to resume nuclear tests, even if Russia were to withdraw. The CTBT, adopted in 1996 by the United Nations General Assembly and ratified by 174 countries, prohibits nuclear weapons tests or explosions anywhere in the world. Reasonable. The treaty has never officially entered into force, so several states have not signed or completed the process of ratification. Let's see which ones. Whether this list includes the people that you'd really, really want to sign that treaty. 
Here it goes. Haven't read it yet. China. Mm. I'd like them to sign it. India. Yes, please. Especially because the next one is Pakistan. Ooh. Egypt. Oh, would you? Iran. Oh, God. North Korea. Oh, it's getting worse. Israel. And finally, dun, 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 the United States. Do you notice that all the people that ain't signed it are the people that you most want to sign it who are most likely to be involved in a nuclear conflict? What a coincidence. Nevertheless, the CTBT is one of the most successful agreements in a long history of nuclear arms control and non-proliferation. Well, <laughs> watch this space. Without the option to conduct nuclear tests, it is more difficult, although not impossible, for states to develop, prove and field new warhead designs, notes Daryl G. Kimball, executive director of the Arms Control Association. In part due to Russia's war in Ukraine, Moscow has increased reliance on its nuclear arsenal in an attempt to deter escalations as its conventional forces have encountered stiff resistance by Ukrainian fighters heavily backed by American and European financial and military support. Indeed, there have been several warnings and even threats from the Kremlin and the Russian security establishment, some more subtle than others, about Moscow's willingness to defend what it views as its existential interest in Ukraine, ultimately with nuclear force if necessary. So still climate change? I mean, like, you know, remember that news broadcast, what's going to kill you first? I mean, is this where we are now? What do you want to die of? Choose your poison? It looks like Vladimir Putin does have nuclear weapons and has said he will use nuclear weapons and has shown that he will respond to red lines being crossed by increasing military activity. And we we are continuing to increase military activity. So I don't know which one's going to kill you first, but I wouldn't bother recycling. Not to be outdone by their Russian colleagues, commentators in the US and Europe appear comfortable calling Moscow's bluff and encouraging an array of options for the intensification of the conflict. While American and European commentators have proven right thus far and no nuclear escalation has occurred, the greatest tragedy is that the day after they are proven wrong, there will be nobody left to tell. Yes, <laughs> that's the nature of Armageddon. We believe there will not be a new... Wait a minute. Nope, we still... Oh. Wait a minute. We don't think we are 100, 90%, 50%. Actually, I'm going to go into the basement for a couple of months. Bye. Following the near apocalyptic episode remembered as the Cuban Missile Crisis, leaders from the US and the Soviet Union sought to establish mechanisms to prevent once again from being on the doorstep of nuclear annihilation. Yeah, it's not a good doorstep. Ding dong. Oh, <laughs> they're not in. These began in 1963 with the Limited Test Ban Treaty. And by 1985, Mikhail Gorbachev and Ronald Reagan jointly stated their nuclear Nuclear war can never be won, must never be fought. Sensible. Those were the glory days, weren't they, of Gorbachev and Reagan? We've come a long way, baby. We must have nuclear wars. Yes, we must. Ah, progress. Is this what progress means, Daddy? It is, son. It is, son. Now go get yourself a job of Burisma. You're overqualified, if anything. Take this gas mask. The two leaders eventually went on to sign the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, which represented the first time the US and USSR agreed to reduce the actual number of nuclear arms. As strategic stability between the two most heavily equipped nuclear states on Earth continues to deteriorate and the deplorable state of diplomatic relations does not bode well for the return of nuclear treaties, China, Britain and others are seeking to modernise and enhance their nuclear capabilities. It's also possible that more states may resort to developing their own nuclear arsenals, viewing the possession of such weapons as the only real means of self-defence in an increasingly disorderly world. Then another facet of the apocalypse we've not considered. Have you not seen the upside? What about those guys over in nuclear weapons manufacturer? It's a boon for them and a boom for us. For its part, the US is in the process of a $2 trillion, three decades long initiative to upgrade its nuclear triad and accompanying infrastructure. A recently published report by the Congressional Commission on the Strategic Posture of the United States paints an alarmist picture of the strategic threat the US faces in the world today and offers recommendations that will likely produce, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, further instability. As the Quincy Institute's Bill Hartung recently wrote, astoundingly, the commission argues that these investments are not enough and that the US should consider building and deploying more nuclear weapons, even as it endorses dangerous and destabilizing steps like returning to the days of multi-warhead land-based missiles while placing nuclear-armed missiles in East Asia. These steps would only introduce more uncertainty into the calculations of China and Russia, making a nuclear confrontation more likely. So it's not just in your imagination, things are actually getting worse. Fuel prices are increasing, food prices are increasing, health is getting worse, children are becoming more obese, peculiar pandemics, strange policies and outcomes, and treaties that protected our future are being torn up, and nations across the world are increasing their nuclear weapons arsenal. Nice little game now for families to play around the campfire, or maybe nuclear fire, is what particular mode of death 
is likely to be the one that destroys your life. A fantastic new board game from the Bidens. The exorbitant expense that the maintenance and modernization of nuclear arsenals require, not to mention the otherworldly destruction that their usage entails, ought to be reason enough for the leading nuclear nations of the 21st century to work towards managing relations so as to eschew a new nuclear arms race. Yeah. Unfortunately, a return of serious strategic stability discussions in the short term appears to be more wishful thinking. Yeah, that doesn't appear appear to be the direction it's heading in, does it? With provocation between Ukraine and Russia, escalation with China and Taiwan, more nations becoming enwrapped in the conflict in the Middle East, more bombast, hyperbole, jingoism, and terrifying warlike language being used by everyone, more invitations to pick a side and be more incendiary everywhere you look, more censorship, more surveillance, more denial of God, more closure of dissenting voices. It doesn't look good does it? And on top of that, climate change. We're not even going to get a chance to enjoy the nuclear apocalypse because there could be a hurricane or an earthquake or a bit more rain or whatever. Best get yourself locked up in a 15-minute city, get yourself a vaccine passport, shut your little old mouth, mask it just in case, and wait quietly and enjoy a lovely game of what's going to kill you first. Brought to you by the Bidens. Maybe, alternatively, you could start supporting independent media, which will become an independent movement as we find new ways to confront this corrupted system, chop the head off this vile serpent and awaken together. But that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the chat? Remember, we stream this content every single day. Become an awakened wonder. Join us. Join us for the movement in the right direction. The only direction we can possibly head in now. This is a fully immersive omni-crisis and you really don't have any choice, but we're going to offer you that option anyway because, you know, democracy and individual freedom and all that kind of stuff. Thank you for taking this all on board, but more important than any of that is if you can, please stay free.